This is chapter four, lesson one, terminating and repeating decimals. Okay, so any fraction can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Okay, so any fraction can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. The decimal form of a fraction is called a blank blank. In those two blanks, you're going to write repeating decimal. So the decimal form of a fraction is called a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals can be represented using blank blank. In those two blanks, you're going to write bar notation. Okay, so bar notation. In bar notation, a bar is drawn only over the digit or digits that repeat. So only over what repeats. That's very important. Don't draw the bar over something that doesn't repeat. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So I have 0 0.333. The dot means it goes on forever. Okay, so I would write this as 0 0.3 with the bar over top of just one three. Okay, repeat it. I also have 0 0.121212 with the dot, dot, dot. That means the one and the two are repeating. That's the pattern that repeats over and over again. So when I write this, I have 0 0.12. The bar is over both the one and the two. Okay. I also have 11.3858585 dot, dot, dot. Okay, so notice here the three does not repeat, but the eight five does. So when I write this, I have 0 0.385. My bar is only over top of the eight and the five because those are the two digits that are repeating. So if the repeating digit is zero, the decimal is a blank blank. In those two blanks, you're going to write terminating decimal. So if the repeating digit is zero, the decimal is a terminating decimal. The terminating decimal, 0 0.250, notice the bar is over the zero, is typically written as 0 0.25. So you don't have to worry about the zero with the bar over top of it. So when I write fractions as decimals, our decimal system is based on powers of 10, such as 10, 100, and 1,000. If the denominator of a fraction is a power of 10, you can use place value to write the fraction as a decimal. So complete the table below, write fractions in simplest form. Okay, so I have 7 tenths, so I can write that as 7 over 10 or 0 0.7. Then I have 19 hundredths. So notice the THS at the end, which means this is going to be less than one. So 19 is my numerator and hundredths is 100. So 19 over 100, which I can then write as a decimal which is 0 0.19, okay? Then I have 105 thousandths. <coughs> so 105, and then thousandths, okay? 
And this is not in simplest form because I can divide both 105 and 1,000 by 5, which gives me 21 over 500. Okay, but I must still use this to write my decimal. So I take 0 and 105. If the denominator of a fraction is a factor of 10, 100, 1,000, or any greater power of 10, you can use mental math and place value. Okay. So I can also go from writing decimals to fractions. So we just did fractions to decimals. I can also do decimals to fractions. Every terminating decimal can be written as a fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, 1,000, or greater power of 10. Use the place value of the final digit as the denominator. Okay. So find the fraction of the fish in the aquarium that are goldfish. Write in simplest form. Okay. So I can look at my table right here. I'm looking for goldfish. Here's my goldfish. Okay, 0 0.15. So this, when I actually say it, normally we, a lot of times we say 0 0.15, but this is actually 15 and there's two places, so 15 hundredths. So when I rewrite this, I have 0 0.15 equals 15 over 100 or 15 hundredths, okay? Another way that you can think about it is I have two places behind the decimal, so I have two zeros in the denominator. I can simplify this because I can divide 15 and 100 both by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, 100 divided by 5 is 20, so 3 twentieths of the fish are goldfish. So there are a couple of try it problems down here. So go ahead, pause the video, try them out, and when you are done, we will go over the answers together. Okay, so now that you've tried out the try it problems, let's go over the answers together. So the first thing I have is write each fraction or a mixed number as a decimal. Some of these are already done for you. Okay, so they just give you a couple more examples. So I have 74 over 100, which is pretty easy to write. 7 20ths I change to 100. So I get 0 0.35. 5 and 3 fourths, I can also change 3 fourths, I can change to hundredths. Or 3 fourths you can just know as 0 0.75. Okay. So, I have 3 eighths. 8 I cannot easily turn into 100, so I'm going to have to divide. Go up here. So I'm doing 3 divided by 8. Okay, 8 can't go into 3, so I'm going to add a decimal and 0. Okay. 8 can go into 30 three times, which gives me 24. I can subtract. 10 minus 4 is 6. And I can bring down another 0. 8 can go into 60. Seven times. Seven times eight is 56. And I subtract, which gives me four. 
Add another zero and bring it down. Eight goes into 40 five times. Which gives me zero. So my answer for three eighths Zero point three seven five. Okay. The next one I have is negative one fortieth. So I'm actually going to ignore the negative. Okay. Forty I can't change into an easy denominator of a hundred. So I'm going to add a decimal. 40 cannot go into 10, but 40 can go into 100 twice. 20, 20. bring down a zero. 40 can go into 200 five times, which gives me 200. So my answer for negative 1 40th, 0 0.025, because there's a negative out front, this also needs to be negative. Okay, the next one I have is 7 point, or 7, <coughs> 7 ninths. Again, 9 I can't make into a common denominator for 100. So I'm going to need to divide. Okay. Nine can't go into seven, so I add a point zero. Nine can go into 70. 7 times. 9 times 7 is 63. So I get seven left over, I bring down a zero. Nine can go into 70 seven times, which again, I get 63. You're gonna start noticing a pattern. So the number that repeats is seven. So when I write this, I get 0 0.7 with the bar. Okay, a couple more try problems. I have three tenths. So for three tenths, I can easily change that to a denominator of 100 or I can just recognize that it's tens. So 0 0.3. Okay. I have negative six and one half. Well, one half is the same thing as 0.5. So I get negative 6.5. Negative 7 eighths does not have a common denominator with a value of 10. So that means I'm going to have to divide. Eight can't go into seven, but it can go into 70. You can go in eight times. Eight times eight is 64. This gives me six, add zero, bring it down. Eight can go into 67 times, which is 56. This gives me four. An eight can go into 40 five times, which is 40, gives me zero. So my answer for negative seven eighths is negative 0 0.875, okay? Then I have eight and one third. So I'm actually gonna ignore the eight first. Three I cannot change. Okay. 
3 cannot go into 1, but it can go into 10. You go in 3 times, I get 9, 1, and bring the 0 down, and 3. You can start seeing the pattern. The 3 is what's going to repeat itself. Okay, So I have 8 and 1 third. So 8 stays, and then I have the 1 third is 0.3 repeating, so 8.3 repeating. Okay, then I have for the molly, and molly is referring to what's up here. Okay, so here's my molly. Molly is 0 0.2. Okay, so if I'm doing that, 0 0.2 is the same thing, that's 2 tenths, so 2 over 10, which I can divide both these by 2, so I get 1 fifth, so for Molly, I should get 1 fifth, for Guppy, I have 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 is the same thing as saying 25 over 100, which simplifies. I can divide both of these by 25, which equals 1 fourth. So the guppies, 1 fourth. And that is the end of lesson one.